What do 5G, IOMT, and an aging population have in common? RF. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. The growing need for remote patient monitoring and wireless connectivity has made RF in medical applications more important than ever before. In this episode of Chalk Talk, I chat with Ketan Thacker from Cinch Connectivity Solutions from a Bell Group about the growing trends in medicine today that are encouraging the use of RF. Why higher frequency, smaller form factor, cable assembly expansion, and adapter expansion are vital components in today's medical applications, and why Johnson Medical Solutions could be a great fit for your next medical design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Bell Group. Hi, Ketan. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Amelia. Absolutely. Okay, so we're investigating RF solutions in medicine today. But before we get started, can you set the stage for us? Why are RF solutions in this field such a hot topic today? The population of the world and in the U.S. has been growing and also aging. And there were trends in place since 5G rolled out several years ago. And one of the purposes of 5G was to support not just uh, mobile phone usage, but really Internet of Things and connectivity to everything. And so you have an aging population and need for more healthcare on one side. And then you also have the ability to have more connectivity in place on the other side. So we have 5G and a cloud infrastructure in place. And then when COVID happened, We have the need and usage of telemedicine, which became more commonplace. I'll just give an example. When you plug in your phone and you're charging it, you expect when you take your phone off of that, it's fully charged and you can use your phone. But if it didn't fully charge and you you looked at your phone and it's dying, you'd feel a little bit lost. Maybe you couldn't do certain things. Well, in the field of medicine, that's much more serious, right? It could be a life or death situation, or it makes the experience for healthcare and supporting patients that much more challenging. So the need for good connectivity in medicine is even growing as the usage of RF in medicine grows. That makes sense. Now, what kind of trends are you seeing pushing the need for these kind of RF solutions? So there has been trend in place for more technology with remote monitoring, diagnostics. Example, in this image, you see the insulin pump and being able to provide insulin to a patient as it's tracking their actual data in real time. But the capability of RF to be used and to have a doctor or a caregiver be able to monitor a patient remotely is what's really allowing more and more patients to be taken care of better. And I think, you know, many of us, we have an Apple Watch or a Fitbit, and that's how we think of more of this technology. But it's been in place, I think, again, having more of the 5G capabilities in place is what's going to allow more and more RF in medicine. So, Kitan, let's talk about the devices themselves a bit. We're seeing a big increase in the market when it comes to medical devices, right? Yes, so true. You know, really, it starts with not just that there's a population that's looking for it, but businesses are in this to provide a solution and they see a large market, an addressable market. And so more and more companies, for example, Johnson & Johnson, Medtronic, and many other medical device companies have been investing billions of dollars to develop new products. And more and more of these products do require FDA approval. And so more of those devices have been getting approved. 59 just in the 2019-2020 period were approved by the FDA. This uh, next slide is just highlighting a number of products that could use more technology, more electronics. And as really any product that has electronics could 
trend towards having RF capability. Just if we think of like IoT as Internet of Things, there's IOMT, which is the Internet of Medical Things. There's a trend in place for more devices to have connectivity in them. And so in the RF space, here you just see, for example, a monitor, an ultrasound screen, an MRI machine, et cetera. You know, whatever those devices are, there's more and more support for RF because that data is being shared with the medical provider. So we also need to talk about connectivity when it comes to these type of devices, right? There's many types of connectivity and people expect connectivity to work, right? You plug it in and it works. And whether it's to collect data or it's to just provide a connection. So for example, in this solution, we're in a cardiac treatment device and the products you see here are not high frequency at all. They're just banana jacks and plugs in order to provide a connection. But what people require is a reliable and rugged connection that's going to last many, many years. That's the solution that we're providing here. We worked through the process with this customer to go through the FDA approval process and uh, meet IEC 60601 standard. Having a product, working with the customer, customizing it, and uh, keeping it available for a long life, those are the strengths of what Johnson brings to market. Do you have any examples of this connector in action? So this particular one is a COVID tester. It actually started out for blood testing in animals, but when COVID happened, it was transitioned. And essentially, this is a push-on type connector, and it's a multi-port. Uh, we call it a ganged connector, but multi-port connector that provides many connections in high density. It does its job, and it works. and that's what people want to see is reliable connectivity. That's super cool. So this next slide shows an MRI machine. And one of the strengths for Johnson beyond just connectivity is having non-magnetic devices. So ferrous material in, for example, an MRI machine, that would affect the performance of the signal because there's magnetic interference. So providing the highest signal quality is what you're looking for when you're wanting to have an MRI and, and you know, have a doctor be able to find something in that MRI. That's why they utilize non-magnetic connectors. And Johnson has the largest portfolio of non-magnetic connectors in the industry. So Kitan, what kind of options do I have when it comes to solutions in this space? So Johnson has a broad portfolio of connector families the broadest being in our sub-miniature, and we have SMA. Then there's also micro-miniature, which has MCX and MMCX. We also have uh, SMB and Type N, and we're in development with our micro-miniature in SMP and SMPM. Johnson continues to innovate. Uh, we've been launching many new products to support 5G, but in the non-magnetic space to support medical applications, we're developing cable assemblies and adapters as well. So what benefits do Johnson Medical Products bring to the table? People depend on Johnson. Johnson's been around for more than 80 years. We provide the highest quality and highest reliable connectors for data transmission. And we're a recognized leader for our SMA connectors and our non-magnetic connectors. As I mentioned before, the Internet of Medical Things is driving a large portion of our development to support medicine. And more and more of our connectors are trending to higher frequency and smaller form factor. So Keitan, this has been a lot to cover today. Can you recap your main points for me? So Johnson makes connectivity solutions. We make connectors, cable assemblies, adapters, and hardware. We work with our customers to support reliable solutions with the intention of supporting a product for a long, long lifetime, counted in decades. So we provide a solution, we put it into our distribution partners, and we support our customers for a long time. That's why people choose to work with Johnson, and we're continuing to develop new products 
to continue to grow the market and support the medical field. Excellent. Well, Ketan, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Amelia. I really enjoyed that. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.